Is it time for Pitt to finally make a move on a local quarterback prospect? Should Pitt take its 2024 quarterback from the Whippeal? Well, I already kind of put the answer to those questions in the headline, but let's talk about it on today's Morning Pit, youtube.com slash pantheler.com. Yeah, they say that uh, the best YouTube headlines are questions, something to sort of draw you in. Should this happen? Does this happen? Did that happen? Will this happen? What will happen? And I'm just not very good at that kind of stuff. I, I need to get better at that. I need to do better at putting head questions in the headlines, something to suck you in so that you uh, really um, you know, get into it and watch the video. And I draw in that audience and get those big numbers to become Mr. Beast. But I'm not there yet. Uh, as you can see from the headline on this video, which is very much not a question, it is a statement, and it's a statement that actually answers the questions that I asked at the beginning of the uh, the episode, the little teaser there before the rock and roll intro. But we still have plenty to talk about on the subject on today's Morning Pit on YouTube.com slash Pantalair.com. Of course, I'm Chris Peak from Pantalair.com, you know, the website below panther-lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com the most comprehensive source of pit sports news on the internet football basketball and recruiting you find it all at pantherlair.com and message boards to interact with hundreds and thousands of other pit fans all day every day pit fans are getting together on pantherlair.com to talk about pit sports i think it's the best online community of pit fans that you're going to find and if you want to talk to other pit fans about pit sports it's the best place you can look on the internet panther-lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com that's the site right there and of course we have our youtube channel right here youtube.com slash pantherlair.com like this video and subscribe to the youtube channel so you never miss any of our exclusive pit video content uh football stuff basketball stuff recruiting stuff uh like today's episode and, and a lot of these morning pit episodes we talk about recruiting but you find it all right there at youtube.com slash pantherlair.com you know we have these daily morning pit videos monday through thursday to get you uh get your day started with some pit conversation and then we have our weekly live show that we do every wednesday night at 8 30 p.m right here at youtube.com slash pantherlair.com jim hannett and jim hammett and i get together and talk about pit sports we'll do that tomorrow night at 8 30 p.m uh, we have our weekly mailbag on Fridays. We have, you know, recruit highlights and game, you know, interviews, post-game practice interviews, practice highlights, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of video content right there at youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. You want to make sure you don't miss any of it, so subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. Um, so our topic today, and I mean, you could see, you saw it in the headline of the video. You kind of picked up on it from what I talked about at the beginning. And it's, it's not necessarily something new. I, I think I probably could go back and look from a week or two ago and find that we talked about this topic of, of where Pitt's going to get its quarterback for the 2024 recruiting class. We broke this topic down before and, and touched on some of the things we're going to touch on here today. Um, but I have a little bit of a different perspective on it because two days ago on Sunday, I was out at Shadyside Academy for the two tenths top 150 camp some of the best prospects some of the best high school football players in western pennsylvania went out to shady side academy um kids that were going into everything from ninth grade through 12th grade so recruiting classes of 2027 26 25 and 24 uh guys going into their senior year junior year sophomore year and freshman year so yeah guys who just finished eighth grade and there's some pretty good 2027 prospects guys going into ninth grade uh that you'll be you'll you'll know about in a couple of years, you know, you might know about them by the end of this year from uh, from the Whippeal. So there's a lot of good players out there. Um, but one of the things that stood out, one of the guys I was most interested in seeing, was Penn Hills quarterback Julian Duggar. Now, we've talked about Duggar before on this morning pit. Like I say, maybe last week or the week before. I have to go and check and see when that was. I wrote about him yesterday from uh you know my impressions from his performance at the camp and i i, I felt a sh i was so impressed by what i saw that i thought maybe we should do another episode about it right here about duggar specifically and that Pitt should just i i don't even say suck it up or bite the bullet or anything like that just make him the quarterback in the class um i think Duggar would be more than happy to go to Pitt. I think he'd be excited to have that opportunity and to go there. And I think it makes a lot of sense for Pitt for a lot of reasons. And I, I'm going to get into all that. Let me say right off the bat, first of all, I'm not a quarterback evaluation, you know, 
expert. You know, I, I'm not a quarterback analyst. Uh, I'm not um, take your pick of of guys who really know the position well. Mostly former quarterbacks, right? That you hear on TV all the time, talking heads. John Gruden used to do his quarterback school thing. I mean, I'm I'm not that. You know, what I mean, look at me. I'm not a quarterback expert, but I remember I was I was reminded of a conversation I had a few years ago. And uh, it was probably 2013 or 2014. And, and if you were on the message boards of Pantheler.com back then, you probably remember extended conversations about the topic of quarterback evaluation. And not necessarily what makes a good quarterback or who looks like a good quarterback, but really the question of Pitt's quarterback evaluation and specifically how they were going about evaluating quarterbacks. They wanted to see them throw in person, right? That was a big thing. Got to see them throw in person. And it's a big thing for most Quarterback coaches, offensive coordinators, head coaches, they want to see them throw in person, which I, I think makes sense. But if you recall, there was a point where Paul Christ sent, what was his name? Uh, I should have looked up his name. They called him JP. He was a defensive line coach or a defensive ends coach or something like that. And he sent him to somewhere in New England or something to see a quarterback throw. And it became a, a running joke on the message boards, oh, they're going to send the D-line coach. You know, you don't want to offer a guy until you see him throw in person, but you're going to send the D-line coach out there. So it was a big to-do, big, not controversy, but a message board, you know, brouhaha. And so I remember sort of in the midst of this or in the aftermath of this uh, dust up on the boards, this big outburst on the boards, I pulled Paul Chris aside one day. I said, listen, man, just out of curiosity, for my own knowledge, and interest, and maybe, you know, something I could share with people to get them to shut up. Uh, and I probably didn't say it in those exact words, but something along those lines. I, I said, what, what goes into the quarterback evaluation process? Do you, I mean, Paul Christ being head coach, but also, you know, quarterbacks coach, offensive coordinator, I mean, we knew the roles that he held at Pitt. I said, do you yourself need to see these guys throw in person, or can you send whoever else out? Can you send Joe Rudolph, Chris Herring, in Oki Brechterfield, can you send these guys out? And is that good or not? Like, what what are we talking about here? What's the actual process? And he said, look, you can watch the tape and you can tell if a guy's a good passer or not. We send guys out to see him in person just to make sure it matches what's on tape. That's what we're trying to do. He said, you know, anybody can tell if a kid can throw the ball well. And, and he, you know, we're standing here. It's just me and him talking. And he, and he points to me, he says, you, even you, could tell if a kid can throw the ball well. You know, we just want to make sure it matches on tape. And I was reminded of that. I, I forget exactly when that, you know, I think about that anecdote every now and then. I think about that story um, just for, for a variety of reasons. But him saying, you know, even you can tell if a kid can throw the ball well. I, I think back on that because I think sometimes I think you can get really deep in the weeds on uh, some of the real analysis and, and the footwork and the mechanics. And, um, you know, if you watch, you know, if you look at Kenny Pickett's quarterback trainer and the videos he puts out and he, he really breaks down like the specifics of footwork and balance and, you know, where the arms go and the shifting and all this stuff. And, and, and it's important. I mean, you need to have all of that, but any of us are like, we may not be able to see all of that and say, oh, I don't like I don't like the way this guy steps, you know, with this foot or the way his arm angle or anything like that. But we can all tell if the ball looks pretty. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can all tell if a guy drops back, throws the ball, and it just looks like a million bucks flying through the air and it drops exactly where it's supposed to drop for the wide receiver to catch it. Right? We can all see that. We don't need to be John Gruden. Uh, or, or any other quarterback savant to be able to tell that, damn, that ball just looks great coming out of his hands. We don't need to be that, right? We can all see it. And there's a lot more that goes into playing quarterback than that. But the very basic, you need to be able to throw the ball. And on Sunday, I watched Julian Duggar throw the ball. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that ball. Oh. Now it's a quick clip. You know, it, you can make of it what you will, but you see him drop back and the ball just looks pretty coming out of hand. You, you heard 
somebody say at the end of the video there that's a beautiful ball or something right because it was it was a great throw and i can tell you the guy caught it down at the other end it was a great pass there was a play this is one of the best moments in that camp um camp ends wrap it up they're bringing everybody together to say a few words at the end of camp and send everybody home and they say wait 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 uh the, the lead trainer dwayne brown from two tenths um two tenths uh, 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 training and speed and agility training uh, who put the whole camp together. He says, hold on, I want one more one-on-one -on -one play. I want one more rep. And he calls out Keyshawn Henderson, a kid, a young kid from uh, Texas who came up. He's got family in East Liberty, and so he came up for the camp and uh, said, I, I want you to be the defensive guy. He's a really good player, really good athlete. He's, he's a national recruit. He's got a ton of offers already, 17, 18 offers. He's going into 10th grade. And he calls out Daniel Kane, a kid who goes to uh, university prep side tech obama i i forget exactly what the name of this you know but he, he uh, it's the old peabody building um and he plays football there and and he's going into his senior year daniel kane they call him boy boy right and, and he's a little guy he lists himself at five eight and if you are a football player and you're saying i'm five eight probably like five seven he's a little guy but he lit it up all day at wide receivers great just a great player and said, you know, Dwayne Brown, the, the trainer says, I want to see one more rep. I want to see these two guys, uh, you know, Daniel Kane, boy, boy against Keyshawn Henderson, you know, uh, Daniel Kane playing wide receiver, Keyshawn Henderson playing uh, DB, you know, Henderson's like six, three, this Daniel Kane's like five, seven. I want you guys to go, go head to head, you know, one more rep, let you guys do it. And like Kane, you know, runs a go route, uses a little stutter step, gets a little separation, gets down, makes a catch for the end zone. The whole place goes wild because they're all, like Pittsburgh kids and Western PA kids, they all go nuts. Ah, you beat the the big kid from out of state and, you know, welcome to the city and all this kind of stuff. And it was, it was a great play. It was very exciting. It was a great way to end the camp. You know who threw the pass? You know who put the pass right on the money after the stutter step and the go route? You know who dropped it, dropped the dime right into Daniel Kane's hands? Yeah, it's Julian Duggar. And, and that's what his camp was like. Just dropping the ball in perfectly. I mean, a pass after pass after pass. As a matter of fact, let's hear from Julian Duggar, see a little bit more clips, uh, a few more clips from Julian Duggar, the Penn Hills quarterback, who was named the quarterback MVP at the 2 tenths top 150 camp on Sunday at Shady Side Academy. All right, so Julian, the uh, MVP, quarterback MVP, yes, the sir. 2 tenths top 150 camp. How'd you feel like you did out here today? Uh, I did good. I felt like I threw the ball good, but there's always room for improvement still putting in work every day trying to get better i've seen you at these camps before i think last year this two tenths uh, top 150 camp how, how, how do you feel like you've improved in the last year from like last july to this july uh i feel like my accurate my accuracy everything's getting better my time my timing throwing the ball before receivers come out their break everything's just improving a little better and what's your big focus heading into this season like what, what do you feel like are some of the things you need to really uh, hone in on uh i would say my footwork and my timing on my routes mm -hmm. and i want to win that's the main <laughs> thing try and win now the last time i talked to you you were fresh off the seven on seven camp at pit yeah. pit had started talking to you a lot more yeah. it seemed like things has that continued over the last few weeks yes sir been keeping in contact with the coaches a lot of times i can't say how often <laughs> but it's it's been a lot we've been texting a lot who, who do you uh, who are you in contact with the most? Uh, Coach Signetti and Coach Norduzzi, they both reach out. Uh, I'll be more than happy to go there. I think they're a great school. I can fit there. I feel like I'll be great for them. So, yeah, if they want me, I'll be more than happy to go there. Two, three. I would say I have something to prove, but I always stay humble. So, not like I'm not cocky with it, but I feel like I have to prove to people that I'm good. Or, but I'm never cocky. Always gotta stay down and be humble. So a little something different there in the morning pit. You get to hear some interviews there. You know, you get to hear from Julian Duggar himself a little bit. You get to watch him throw a few passes, admittedly with my shaky camera work, but you got to see a little bit. You got to see how the ball comes out of his hands. And and this was the thing I came out of that camp thinking on Sunday. I came out of it going, why not? What's the downside in taking this guy? 
Yeah, and, and, and maybe smarter people than me could say, well, his footwork this or his accuracy that or this or that. I don't know. Kick and throw the ball. And there's probably some mechanical things that can be improved, some fundamentals that can be developed, but that's why you're a coach. You coach to develop those things. What you can't coach is the fact that he's 6'3", 200, he can dunk a basketball, he's a great athlete, and he throws the ball. Beautiful. Beautiful throws. You can't teach that. You can't teach and coach some of those things he naturally has. If I'm Pitt, I'm more than happy to make Julian Duggar my quarterback in this 2024 class. Now, Duggar, you know, his offer sheet is not exactly intimidating if you're if you're a power five school. Um, you know, UMass, Toledo, Fordham, Stony Brook. You know, the, the, those last couple offers that he picked up in June after he went to camps, he went to a ton of prospect camps, went Sorry, to a bunch could of... could you say that again? Went to a bunch of... My watch sometimes pick up picks up my uh, voice. I'm sorry if you heard uh, heard that on there. Um, Went to a bunch of Power 5 prospect camps in June. Didn't get offers from those schools. Virginia, West Virginia, et cetera, et cetera. You say, well, why not? You know, is, is that a red flag? That he went and camped for all those schools and didn't pick up offers? And, and I think there's a few things to it. One, and we, you can't overlook it, and it's a weird kind of excuse to make, but the more and more I talk to people, the more and more I think there's something to it. He's left-handed. And, you know, you and I, who spent a whole bunch of the 2000s watching Rod Rutherford and Tyler Palco, will say, who cares if he's left-handed? The reality is, a lot of guys care. A lot of college coaches care. And I think there's a decent number of college coaches, and, and and I've heard this. I heard this from a bunch of people on Sunday. I've heard it from people since then. Um, there seems to be a decent number of college coaches who will almost automatically eliminate a guy because he's left-handed. It doesn't make it impossible for a left-handed quarterback to make it. Uh, it doesn't make it impossible for a left-handed quarterback to get offers and be a, a power five target. <clears throat> but it seems like it makes it a little bit difficult that there is a built-in bias. You know another part of the problem? He threw the ball 130 times last year at Penn Hills. 130 passes. There were like 50 quarterbacks. I, I countered. According to the Post-Gazette's stats website, there were like 50 or more quarterbacks in the Whitfield and the City League who threw the ball more than Julian Duggar did last year. He's not the number 52 quarterback in the Whitfield. You know what I mean? Like, if you were going to base the amount of throws that a guy should make, um, on, on his caliber, you know, like the, the best quarterback in the Whippeal should throw the ball the most times. You know what I mean? Like that you're playing to your strengths. He's not like number 52. Rodney Gallagher at Laurel Highlands threw the ball more than Julian Duggar did. Julian Duggar threw the ball 130 times. Rodney Gallagher, I think threw it like according to the post Gazette website, like 167 times. And that's a guy who is a, a wildcat quarterback. And he's throwing the ball, more, and he's not going to play quarterback in college, but he's throwing the ball 37 more times than Julian Duggar. Duggar averaged like 8.7 yards per attempt, I think, threw 10 touchdowns on 130 attempts, two interceptions, threw more touchdowns than like at least a dozen or more guys who threw more passes than he did. I don't know if Penn Hill's offense, and they had Amir Key was the running back. He carried the ball 150 some times. Duggar ran it another 60 or 70 times himself, averaged like seven yards per carry because he's a great athlete. But I don't know if Penn Hill's offense necessarily highlighted his strengths, you know, and, and emphasized and played to his strengths to put good tape out there. And and the thing with Duggar, um, and the thing I'm, I, you know, another part of what's got me more and more convinced the pitch should just go all in on him is if by some chance it doesn't work out. And this is not to say that I think it's not going to work out, but if by some chance it doesn't work out for him as a quarterback in college, he can absolutely play wide receiver. He can play safety. He can play outside linebacker, something like that. He's a good enough athlete to do that. And you say, well, you're not making that that excuse or that caveat for other quarterbacks. You're not saying somebody else would have to move to wide receiver. That's because most quarterbacks can't move to wide receiver. What I'm saying about Duggar is I, I think he's got the arm to play at the Power 5 level. If for some reason it doesn't work out, he's a good, an athlete, good enough athlete to play another position. Other quarterbacks, if for some reason it doesn't work out, they're just eating up a scholarship spot or they're transferring to FCS because they're not good enough to play at your level. 
Duggar, you've got options if for some reason it doesn't work out. Now, I understand why Pitt might not push for Duggar right now. I, I understand why they might take their time, why they might have a little bit of time that they can take. Um, he doesn't seem to be in a hurry to make a decision. Again, his other options, UMass, Fordham, Stony Brook, he can take Toledo. He can take, you know, he's not in a rush to jump on those options. And they're still trying to get a feel for Trevor Jackson, the other quarterback that they've been after for quite some time. Although he's picked up more Power 5 offers in the last few weeks. I think Ole Miss was the most recent one that came over the weekend. But if it works out that they end up with Duggar, I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, if, if they don't want to push 100%, go full court press on him right now, okay. But if you watch the first few games uh, of this coming season and he looks good and he's throwing it a lot and he's he's throwing as well in the fall as he has so far this summer, I say go for it. You might as well go for it because I think he can be a pretty good quarterback at the next level. He's got all the tools you want to bring in and develop. So I'm no coach. I'm no quarterback expert. I'm no... I'm, I'm, I'm in no position to make this call whatsoever. But if it was me, I just might do it. All right, tomorrow we're going to be breaking down the tight ends because it is, because it is tight end week here on PantherLair.com. Got through the quarterbacks, the running backs, the wide receivers. Receivers were last week. This week we're moving on to the tight ends, and it is a quandary as you might expect, but we'll be breaking it down on tomorrow's morning pit. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to never miss any of our exclusive pit video content. And then head over to pantherlair.com, the most comprehensive source of pit sports news on the internet. Panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com to never miss any of our coverage of pit football, basketball, and recruiting. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Hope you had a great start to the week yesterday. I hope your Tuesday goes well. We'll be back with you tomorrow for another morning pit right here on youtube.com slash pantherlair.com.